Hi guys, welcome down to another Finch Friday and this week's response to my kind of request for questions has been ridiculous. There are so, so many. There's well over 100 kind of requests this week. Now what I'm going to have to do is pick and choose a few of them, I'm afraid. I just can't simply answer them all, just won't have time. But I'm going to try and get as many in as possible. So let's go. Okay, so we're going to start on Instagram. Uh, Blair Garner, what are yours and Rick's plans for the new year? Hashtag Finch Friday. There are so many things. There are so, so many things coming up. Probably the nearest big exciting project is we're going to do a lot of videos on second hand clubs so exactly what is out there on the market uh, we've got a really exciting project where we're just putting the final touches to then that should be coming around the time of the masters maybe just a little bit before but stay tuned for that i think a lot of people are really going to enjoy that content and it might open open people's eyes a little bit to exactly what is out there as far as equipment is concerned uh, and what you can grab second hand very exciting also on Instagram, Gary Mro Botham. <laughs> what is the best piece of advice given to you? Hashtag Finish Friday. Uh, in golf terms, probably the best piece of advice that I've ever received, which has helped me more than anything on the course, and it helps everyone on the course if they commit to it, is leave the bad shots behind and forget about them. There's literally nothing that you can do about the bad shot that you've hit. Unless you're capable of time travel, there's no way you can get that shot back. It's gone. It's over. And to carry that frustration over onto your next shot or over onto your next kind of hole or whatever it might be will damage your game. The best piece of advice that I ever had that I took on board and it instantly changed my enjoyment of the game for one is the ability to leave bad shots behind and move on to the next shot and not let that last shot really frustrate you. By far the best piece of advice I've had. So a question on Instagram, uh, again, Minsky, Mincy. Uh, if you could play one more hole for the rest of your life, which would it be and why? Ooh, I wouldn't want to say a hole that I've not actually physically played. So, so I think there's so many great ones. I'd probably go a bit of a left field one, but on the Isle of Arran off the west coast of Scotland, there's a course called Black Crow Waterfoot. Uh, I think it goes under another name on the island as well, but it's a it's a 12 hole course and actually regularly makes it into like the top 100 courses in the UK. It's a very little random course that's just peaked on the side of the coast, but it's it's stunning in some parts. And one of the holes, I can't remember which hole it is now, come to think of it. I think it's the I think it's about the sixth. It kind of curves around, but the coast is right on the coast, right next to the sea. It's like a par four. It's a lovely hole, but when I last played it, it was one of those days that you get by the sea, which is perfectly still. So there's no waves, there's no wind, and it looks like the sea's a lake and it's so still. And about kind of 200 meters out there was just this massive seabird um, I'm not even sure what it was, it was that far out, but when it took off, because it was so quiet, because this course was kind of so secluded, you could hear it and you could see the ripples that it made on the ocean and the sun was setting, it was a clear day, and it was just one of those moments that I remember, you know, one of those moments that really stick in your memory. So for that, I'll, I'll say that hole, but got deep. Okay, another emo wear. What is your opinion on Scotty Cameron's? Overpriced, worth the cost? What do you think? Well, every putter, I think, which has won on the PJ Tour this year has been Scotty Cameron. So, obviously, Mr. Scotty knows what he's doing. And Mr. Cameron knows what he's doing. I would say it amazes me how often people are willing to part with money for a driver, which they're only going to be hitting probably the maximum about 14 times in a round. Now, if you have a look at a putter, which you're pretty much guaranteed to hit every single hole, why is there such a an issue with paying more money for a putter than for a driver. It, it's, you know, statistically, you're gonna be hitting that more than your driver. Now, I know the driver's more impressive when you're kind of hitting it a long, long way, but the putters are very, very important. And Scotty Cameron's, for so long, have been one of the real pinnacles of putter design, you'd say. A really a desirable putter to own, not because of performance, but also just because it's a lovely looking object. So, I would say no, they're not overpriced and the quality is there for to see. If you've got, if you got some money and you're looking to invest in a new golf club, don't go automatic to a driver or irons or wedges. Have a look at your putter as well. I need a cup, a sip of me coffee. 
you think of my uh, mug, by the way. Peter Allen, how did you get on at school grade-wise? Um, actually, okay. I I performed a lot better than what I was expected to. It's probably the best way of putting it. Um, I got A's in English. Well, a few A's in English, the way the exams are structured over here. An A in PE, a fair few B's, a few C's, and then a D and an E. Uh, my E was in German. I actually swore in my oral exam. <laughs> which doesn't tend to go down that well, apparently. Um, but I, I've got to be honest, I I didn't really enjoy school that much, to be honest. I enjoyed college more because it was more golf-orientated, but school was all about my friends, really, to be honest. That's the part of school I enjoyed. The way that education is structured in the UK, I'm not a massive fan of. Um, so I do feel quite passionate about, actually. I'll tell you what, if you are interested more in kind of learning about education and stuff like that and how it could change for the better. There's a really fantastic, well, two really fantastic talks on the TED YouTube channel. Type in Ken Robinson and his videos will come up. He's um, he's like an academic teacher in the UK. Fantastic, watch those videos, brilliant. Uh, Jason Kaz 12, how do you reduce first team nerves? Um, I read an article once by Podrick Harrington which really changed the way I feel about nerves on the first tee. Podrick Harrington, Obviously, he's someone who thinks about the game a lot. He's very analytical. And he used to say that he was incredibly nervous on the first tee for anything, you know, whether it be a, a four-ball knock with his mates or a major tournament. He used to be incredibly nervous. Now, the, the advice that he was given was to always fight the nerves, you know, pretend that they're not there. But he said that didn't work. So what he did, and this is what I do, if I'm ever nervous on a first tee, I accept the nerves. So if I'm nervous, I'm like, okay, I'm nervous. I take a deep breath and I allow the nerves in. I allow the nerves to basically wash over me. And once they wash over me and once I feel nervous and I accept that I'm nervous, I can kind of bottle it a little bit more. And I can say, okay, I'm nervous. I admit that now. And it relaxes me. I don't try and fight against it. Nerves are a good thing in many respects. If you're feeling nervous, Nerves and excitement, very close together. If you're feeling nervous, you're feeling excited, you're feeling on edge, it means something. And it's it's those moments that you need to strive for. You know, you need really more nerves and more excitement in whatever you do. So allow those nerves in, take a deep breath, accept that you're nervous, and get ahead and play. It will work. Sounds a bit counterintuitive, but it will work. Scott Johnson, what advice would you give to a 15-year-old five handicapper wanting to make it as a pro? Uh, I don't know if you mean a tour pro or kind of a PGA pro. As far as being a PGA pro, you only need to get down to four to be a PGA pro. Well, you don't need to get down to four to turn pro if you want. Um, honestly, I'd, I'd try and find a good instructor who knows your games and will give you sound advice. I think that's something that I wish I would have had more of at that age. So try and find a good instructor. Try and find someone who knows what you want to do and who you can trust and go down that avenue. James Watson too. What do you think of the left-hand low putting method for people who are twitchy over short putts? So left-hand low, cross-handed, Jordan Spieth like, uh, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I won't say just over twitchy putts. I think the cross-handed method is, when you think about it technically and some of the things that it gives technically, it probably actually is a better way to put. If you're kind of just starting out I would actually recommend trying cross-handed first. It's something that I didn't do. I, I put in a conventional standard. When I switched to cross-handed, I can't quite get used to the feel. I think it's just because I've done it so long in a conventional way. But I think a cross-handed action is actually a very good way to put. I would experiment with it. Not just over the short ones, but over the longer ones as well. Uh, Kristen underscore TD. I'm 16, playing off plus one. Should I try and qualify for the Open? Um... If you want to give it a go, um, there's no harm in trying. I mean, any any competition that you can play in at your age and your level, more the merrier. Just just go for it. Enter a competition. I wouldn't. I mean, don't go into these competitions expecting to qualify or expecting to win. I'm. I know I'm not. I'm. I'm just expecting to try and shoot the best I can. But just go for it. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's no reason why you shouldn't. There's no reason why you can't do whatever you want to do. And the more competitions that you play in, the more practice that you get the better you'll be all around. Jacob Malloy. Hi, Jacob. Um, hi, Pete. I've been out of golf for a few months as I had a slight injury in my back and then the weather, which every in the UK is terrible. I really want to get back into it, but I'm struggling to find the motivation. What should I do? I cannot provide in, I cannot provide motivation. It's very, it's, this is one of the things that I, I find 
tricky with people who want to improve or say they want to improve but then say they can't find the motivation motivation has to come from you um if someone tries to motivate you it can work for a short period of time and in certain situations but to really have motivation that mean something and it will sustain you it's got to come from inside if you don't feel motivated to do something you've got to ask yourself why why don't i feel motivated to do something and often when you analyze it and when you say to yourself i'm in this situation and why do i not feel motivated the answers can come pretty quickly but i can't provide that for you you're gonna to have to reach down and have a think and understand why this might be happening jay gustafferson nine is there anything that you could is there anything that you can't do currently that you wish you could this can be related to golf or anything else in life wow um i kind of wish i could replaster and i could sort my house out and decorate that's what i wish i could do at this moment in time um anything i could do in golf have a consistent short game but that's not something that i can't do that's just something i need to practice so i I wouldn't the the way that you've kind of worded it is there anything that you can't currently do that you wish you could do you can't wish for something if you want to do something you go out and practice you go out and learn and then you try and do it don't wish your life away wishing you could do stuff just go and do it uh, so a couple of questions on this actually um sss cotter hi peter i second jasper's question uh, why do you slightly lift your club on the takeaway um so when i just before i hit the shot i lift the club up off the ground so i'm hovering the club behind the ball um it was something i started doing after i read sam torrance's book actually autobiography about why he hovers his club it it'll, it makes me feel like i can have a cleaner takeaway so there's no kind of danger of it snagging on any grass when I go back. I started doing it when I was a junior and I do it now. And it kind of feels almost unnatural for me to put the club on the ground and take it away like that. So there's no real, what I would say, there's no real kind of technical reason why. It's more of a feeling that I can get and I can take it away a lot smoother. Works for some people, works for me, might not work for you. But give it a go, give it a try, why not? Okay, we're going to switch on to Facebook and try and get through some there as well. Um, okay, sorry guys if I missed any of your questions out. It's just timing at this moment in time. Um, Jamie Galbraith, with your very busy schedule, do you manage to get any time off completely away from golf? Hashtag Finch Friday and Eagle Moose. Um, at this moment in time, I don't... Well, Sunday is the only day where I... I don't do any editing and I try not to play any golf because that's my, well, that's my time with, with Carly, my girlfriend. So I've kind of kept that separate to anything. Um, but the other six days of the week, yeah, just pretty much all the time. I, I'm lucky I enjoy what I do. So I get to live my job, if that kind of makes sense. And it's, it's, more, like a, it's more like a hobby than a job. It is hard work, but it's hard work that I enjoy. So... I'm pretty lucky in that. I don't really need to feel like, and I don't feel I need to take any time off, if that makes sense. Hope it does. So, popular question from Kyle Walters: Are we going to see a Mark Crossfield and Coach Lockie versus Peter and Vic versus me and my golf versus Busman and Pickard? I can't be the only fan wanting this match to happen. So, obviously, a YouTube mega match there. Um, it would be good. I think a lot of people would want to get involved and come down and watch that. I think the only problem from our point of view is simply getting everyone together in one place at this moment in time is almost it's almost impossible i'm pretty sure that at one point last year um to the, the end of last year me and rick were in arizona i think me and my golf uh, andy and peers were in bermuda i think mark was in i want to say spain I can't remember, but there's one point I noticed kind of last year that we were all like spread out across the world. And I, and I thought at the time, you know, that, well, YouTube's just gone mental, obviously. Um, I thought it was absolutely amazing. So actually just getting us all in the same place is the tricky bit. But I don't know. It might happen. There's every possibility. Right, guys, that's all I've got time to actually get in. Um, that's, that's, I've got managed to get through a lot of questions there. Thank you so, so much for asking so many fantastic ones. I'm sorry if I've missed yours, but please get them in again for next week's Q&A. Right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to need to get this edited and then get out into the cold, do some practice. Cheers. See you soon. 
Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on other social media platforms as well. I need to get that in before the end of the video to make sure people do it.